if somebody comes to you that they have a good, clean intention, they really don't know, and they ask, Sheikh Luqman Effendi, why are you giving so much importance to Ottomans? Why is it important in our life today? Why do I need to concentrate on it? What would be your answer to that person? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It is not because I give importance to the Ottomans. It's because Sahib al Saif gives importance to the Ottomans. Our Sheikh, and it is because Grand Sheikh gives importance to the Ottomans. Grand Sheikh is Sultan al Awliya. Whatever Sultan al Awliya gives importance to, that means that it is an order from Allah and from His Prophet والسلام, to give importance to the Ottomans. Now, if you ask me the question, why then are the imp uh, Ottomans important? They're important for two things. They're important for us to know our past, and they're important for us to know our future. The history of Islam is 1,400 years. Hmm? If we take the Ottomans, it's 600 years. If we take the Seljuks, give them, what, 100, 200 years? That's 800 years. Out of 1,400 years, 800 years is belonging to the Seljuk Turks and the Ottomans. That is more than half of the history of Islam. Because this is the part of our history that Muslims do not know. They are completely ignorant about, and it is very, very important. Eight hundred years, two hundred years of Seljuk rule, that although they were given sultanate, they're given authority, but they said, we will give that authority back and the Khalifa must rule still. And the Seljuks then stood in front of the unbelievers and they stood in front of the hypocrites to stop the Muslim Ummah and the Muslim lands and the empires from completely eating each other up. So that is very important, because although the Muslims had power since from the time of the Umawis and continuing to the time of the Abbasis, but because of so much pressure from the outside and so much pressure from the inside and the attraction to the dunya and everything, the power of the Muslims, they were starting to weaken. It was already weakening and there was too much infighting and conflict and weakening that was happening because Muslims at that time, they were losing the compass a little bit. If they were not losing the compass, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not send heavy punishment to them, to us, from the hands of the unbelievers, the Mongols who came and who completely destroyed Baghdad. Baghdad is a city that is, today, you cannot even imagine if you know everything. And Allah will not grant power to the Christians to take Andalusia and Spain that has been under Muslim control for, what, six, eight hundred years. These are no small things, big things. Allah grants victory to the believers. When Allah grants them uh, failure, then there is something that is very wrong with them. So the smack happened. And when the Ottomans, they took power, they were the ones that was prophesied by Sultan al-Arifin, Hazrat Bayazid al-Bistami, and also from uh, Shaykh al-Akbar ibn Arabi blessing them and even the Holy Prophet والسلام, blessing the one who takes over Istanbul, Constantinople. The blessings of the Prophet is on them, Sultan Mehmed Fatih and his troops and his descendants. 
And our Sheikh saying to us now, now this is, I'm still talking about the past. If we don't know this, we don't know our history, we don't know who we are. You don't know who you are, even if you are rich and you are powerful and you are smart, but you don't know who you are, the people who wake you up will plant poison inside of you telling you who you are. That time they can control you. And so, as Shaykh Maulana is saying, because at that time too, we're talking about maybe 70s and 80s, he was praising the Ottoman so much and there were a lot of people who were criticizing him. And he says, don't you dare criticize me, he's saying. Don't you dare say anything about the Ottomans. He's saying they were holding high the flag of the Prophet والسلام, correctly, he's saying, for 600 years. They were running for the love of the Holy Prophet والسلام, and the love of the Allah and the love of the Ahlil Bayt more properly than the earlier empires. And he's saying that that is the empire that the Prophet والسلام, is saying that they are sultans, they are sultans. They are ruling properly with high authority. And after them, after the sultans, then you will have Jababira, the age of biting tyranny. This is after the Ottomans are finished, then the biting tyranny, the age of tyrants, they start all over the world. They brought down the sultan, they brought down every kingdom almost in this world. Now their feet is ruling the head. We must know our history closest to us. It doesn't matter if you know your history 1,000 years ago, 1,400 years ago. Good, you know that. But you don't know what happened just yesterday. How are you going to understand what happened 10 years ago? You don't know what happened yesterday, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 100 years ago. You don't know what happened then so that to understand where you are now. But you try to understand 1,000 years ago, to understand where you are now, impossible for you to know. There's a complete break now. Because what happened to us as an Ummat also happened 100 years ago, less than 100 years ago. It's not thousands of years ago. Now if you speak to the common Muslim when they speak about sultans and khalifas, they think, oh, during the medieval times. But the Ottomans brought us, yes, from we're not going to use Eurocentric time measures. Eh? It is their medieval time. When Sultan Mehmed Fatih conquered Istanbul, he started a new era. End of Roman rule and the beginning of Shariat, the beginning of Islam, the beginning of the laws of the Prophet ﷺ. Understand that the Ottomans then brought the Muslim nation from the 1400s, 1400s, eh? 1500s, 1600s, 1700s, 1800s, 1900s. You understand the time span here? And when you look at the history of the world for thousands of years, this is the most changes that has happened to the history of mankind is happening, let's say, within the last 400 years, 300 years, 200 years, 100 years. It is this time. It is not 1,000 years, 2,000, 5,000 years ago holding the flag of the Prophet ﷺ properly, ruling Islam in the nations properly, ruling the people properly, and making people to come into this modern world. So, Bismillah. The Ottomans were not a nationalistic or empire. They are not an empire that is based on race. It is an empire, number one, that is based on Tasawuf, openly supporting, promoting. And Islam that they brought, let's say, from the uh, uh, Balkans to Africa to Indonesia, the Islam that they brought and they spread is the Islam with Tasawuf. Don't believe people saying Islam was brought to these areas by traders. What they're trying to say is Muslims are money-minded, dunya-oriented, they travel to make money. Oh, by the way, let's pray here. And people suddenly became Muslims. No, it's not like that. Too. So, understanding the Ottomans' ruling, you'll understand how Islam was ruled properly, not on the basis 
of language, not on the basis of your nation, or your nationality, or your race. It is based on Islam, based on love of the Prophet والسلام, and love of the awliyaullah. This is why it is important. Now when we look towards the future, the Ottomans will return. This is Ahir Zaman. I like to say Ahir Zaman because my shirt says Ahir Zaman. People get very um, annoyed with me. They say, you see, he doesn't even know Arabic. It's Ahir Zaman. Ahir Zaman. You understand? You understand. You don't understand? You're a donkey. What can I do? So, this is Ahir Zaman, the end of the end of times. This is the time when Dajjal is ruling. This is dark darkness, like what Sultan al Awliya is saying. We are living in those times that the Prophet had been prophesying 1400 years ago. Openly, he is speaking about so many things, but just a couple of things that we can say that people are already speaking about. Prophet is saying, end of times is going to happen. What's going to happen? The barefoot and naked Bedouin Arabs, they will be racing to build tall buildings in the desert. Such a thing was not even thinkable 100 years ago, let alone 1,000 years ago. Don't say, ah, they always say it's end of the world. End of no, no, Islam is not like Christianity. There is a timing. There are people with knowledge. So, Prophet is saying, when they are going to dig holes inside mountains, in the Hejaz, in these mountains, he says, that is the time. So many other prophecies is coming that we are seeing from individual to uh, the behavior of the society to the behavior of the ethics and morality of that society to things physically that are going to change into this world. This is Ahir Zaman. We are waiting for Mahdi salam to appear. But Mahdi salam is not going to appear until the Sultan appears first. The Khalifa coming from the house of Osman will appear first. He will take that authority that is given to the house, that they are still ruling, they still have that authority, they are not ruling, they still have, Allah is still giving them, giving them that power, but they are behind the scenes now. And they are going to give now to Hazrat Mahdi salam when he appears, Mahdi salam now will take that authority, he will give it to Isa, Hazrat Isa salam. And he will rule now in this world for some say seven years, some say 40 years. We are now, you may say, we're not even in the middle of it. We're not in the middle of it. Things are going to change very quickly, very fast. We don't have to wait too long. So here we are. Shah Fendi, Shah Malana saying, those who are not accepting the Ottomans, their faith is in trouble. They will not be accepted by Hazrat Mahdi. Doesn't matter who they think they are. And the Prophet, alayhi salatu was salam. He is saying, if you don't, if you die and you don't give bayat to a Khalifa, you will die the death of a person who lives in Jahiliya times. So, this is important. We believe in the Ottomans. We're giving our bayat through our sheikhs to the Ottomans. And we wish to live and to die recognizing the Hilafat and the Ottomans. Whether Allah puts them behind or Allah puts them in front. 
but the events that are going to happen, everyone is going to see. As our Shah says so many times, doesn't matter who is in front. When the dust settles, you will see whether it is a donkey or a horse. Now there's dust everywhere, so nobody knows what it is. Our job is just to continue, inshallah. So this is important, without getting too much into the, de into the details of how the Ottomans were, how they ruled, in terms of their politics, their statesmanship, their education, their military, their technologies, their science, their religion, their spirituality, all these aspects of life. Without really getting too much into that, but if you do, you will understand how much they are blessed and how much they are a very high level people. And if we understand that and we ask Allah to bless them, Allah will bless us. They are holy ones. You understand? And this is not about nationality, this is not about race. We are not trying to be Turks. No. We are trying to be Ottomans because the Ottomans, they were not branding themselves Turkish. They were saying we are Muslims, we are Ottomans. You're from the Balkans, you're not Turkish, you're Ottoman. You're from North Africa, you're not Turkish, doesn't matter, you're Ottoman. You're Arab or Ajam, a Chinese, or you are Indonesian. Even if you are uh, from the subcontinent, all the Muslim nations at that time, they have to pay allegiance and give bayat to one sultan, one khalifa. And that is an Ottoman khalifa and everyone is an Ottoman. So inshallah, may Allah give them their power back soon, their rights soon. May we live for them, may we die for them, inshallah. May we live for Allah and His Prophet in our share. And may we live and we die in truth. May Allah forgive me and bless you, Al-Fatiha. Amen. Assalamu alaikum.